Hey everybody, this is Rick Yuzi from Zcorum as Tech Tuesday. I'll be right back. Thanks for joining me for Tech Tuesday. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, corrective diagnostics and how that could be helpful where you have workers working remotely, people from home, which uh, a lot of us now are in that position, whether it's uh, here at Zcorum, as you can see behind me, I'm still here at home. And if you're a cable operator, fiber, fiber, whatever, you may have um, customers that are working at home right now, excuse me, customers, you might have staff that are working at home right now. For example, you may have your call center agents working remotely, you may have field technicians who normally might be in the office part of the time, uh, now we're just home all the time. You may be struggling for um, how to maybe use those resources. So I want to talk today about how corrective diagnostics uh, can help you in that situation where maybe you can be more efficient while people at home, you can make sure that they can have visibility into the network, into the CPE on the network. Um, and we're going to be using TrueVision as uh, an example of that. Um, next week, just so you can make a note to, to stay tuned, uh, next week we're going to be talking about proactive network maintenance and how that can also help you in a situation like this where uh, you can proactively address some things uh, in advance where you know, they won't be an issue later. And also it gives you some, it gives your field staff something to do or some staff, something, some staff things to do maybe if they are um, not able to enter homes right now, maybe they can do some things in the outside plant. So I'll be talking about that next week. But today we're talking about corrective diagnostics, which I'm going to uh, be showing you here. Before I do that, I wanted to um, want to let you know, uh, it's funny, I was wa we did our broadcast last Tuesday, and then I was watching Brady Bolt's uh, broadcast on Friday, and he was nice enough to mention this broadcast, because we covered last week, when I was, when I was going through this, I had uh, a lot of operators on, and we were discussing uh, maybe some best practices during this pandemic, and uh, covered a lot of um, stats and those kinds of things and Brady did he mentioned that because he really focused on as you can see your capacity challenges um, and he had on uh, John Downey both these guys are like really really knowledgeable as far as the Doxus world so I just wanted to point that out to you I figured I'd give him, give him a shout out and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put right now in the comments uh, a link there to his broadcast if you want to check that out but you can just also go to YouTube and search for Volt Firm and you'll find Brady, uh, you'll find this video as well as all the other ones that he does. He does a broadcast about once a month. Um, so anyway, check that out. That's great. So I wanted to talk about uh, specifically today, I'll go ahead and close this. Again, uh, corrective diagnostics. And you're looking here at True Vision. Um, and I'm going to take you through some screens. And you know, obviously, some of the stuff you're going to use all the time, whether you've got people at home or not, whether your things are completely back to normal. But there are some things in here that you may not be aware of. A lot of you may be True Vision customers already. Uh, if you're not, then this will be maybe educational for you on what you can do with an application like this. Um, in any event, if you have a question, whether you're a customer or not, feel free to uh, type it in right here. Hello, Rick Inger. I saw Rick on uh, Brady's broadcast the other day. Rick's a customer of ours. Uh, so anyway, um, if you're a customer and you have questions about anything we're talking about here, there are probably some features in here you may not even be aware of. Go ahead and uh, you can put those on here via chat and I'll answer them as best I can. I don't have Peter Olivia sitting next to me. That would not be right right now. I could have brought him in on Skype, but I figure we'll cover some of the things that I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to go through pretty quickly and I'll probably cover a lot of these things in more detail uh, maybe with Pete on future broadcasts, but we'll kind of do a good overview right now. So um, we're looking right here at the CMTS screen, and um, this is a great overall screen for you, you know, for you to look at every day. Just open this up and see what's going on in your plant. And there's a couple of things in here that I think are really useful for uh, this particular time. Of course, you get, you can find out which channels have the most number of devices that are out of spec up here, and that's from worst the best as you scroll down, it gets a little better um, on either side. And by the way, what I'm looking at here, this particular CMTS, it's a real CMTS, and these are real devices I'm going to be pulling up on this particular CMTS, but they're not in the locations where, they, where we're saying they are. So the customer name is a fake name, and then we plotted them on a map here in uh, North Georgia as opposed to where these customers are really located. So just want to make that clear. Um, 
So again, we've got uh, upstream and downstream uh, RF alerts right there, average upstream SNR, and this bandwidth utilization um, would be helpful for you, I think. So you can look at, again, a lot of people online right now that may not be online, especially during the early part of the day and the middle part of the day. A lot of times people come home and you get parents and students and kids and everybody's online at once, and that's normal for your prime time. But now it seems like prime time is stretched out along the whole day as you've got students doing their school from home, you've got kids being home, maybe watching Netflix or Disney when they weren't before, and you've got you know parents at home that were working from home on VPN now that maybe weren't doing that before. So bandwidth has gone up quite a bit uh, for operators in the last couple of weeks, and we're seeing that. So here you get a nice view of your bandwidth, um, downstream and upstream bandwidth utilization, and uh, you can click. And in this case, again, these are, um, I don't have a lot of names in here because this is a, our demo database. So again, the names that you do see are not real, and then we've just got MAC addresses on, on a lot of these because they're not, we don't have the fake names in there for a lot of these devices. But you can get a, a good idea of the bandwidth. You can look at now the last seven days and the last 30 days and see what those totals are. Uh, so that's a nice thing that you can check on the CMTS screen. I'm going to go back here. Um, and you've got, again, upstream bandwidth utilization. And this also is worst to first. Worst to best? <laughs> worst to best. So as I go here to the right, um, you can see I can use my little arrows here and check all of these channels. Same thing here. All right, there. So, uh, and then you've got Modem status by channel. This was, you know, these these are all good things to know at any time. But I think bandwidth, especially during this time, is something that would be helpful for you. Um, modem status by node, and then you've got code word errors. There's something else I wanted to show you under the, on the overview as far as bandwidth goes. When I click here, I've got uh, Mac domain that I can look at, and this is showing me again. I've got different date ranges here. Right now, I'm looking at yesterday, but I can see the downstream, average downstream, and upstream. No, this is all downstream. Average downstream utilization for these particular MAC domains this way. So again, if you're trying to figure out bandwidth usage right now and what's going on, this is a tool that I think would be very useful for you. And again, you can look at uh, seven days, 30 days, and just get an idea of what's going on there. And I'm going to go back to my data tab. Oh, well, actually, while I'm in here, um, you can look at modems too. And so I scroll down. I see uh, I've got bandwidth here as far as downstream and upstream, and these are going to be my highest use during this period, this, in this particular case, yesterday, or I can go seven days, and I can see what my highest use subscribers are down here on the downstream and the upstream bandwidth as far as the top 10. And then you've got other kind of stats in here, times online for different users, total flaps, so you can see which customers are having some issues. And then you can see code word errors, and then again down here the bandwidth. So that I think is helpful. Uh, we've got you know your worst nodes um, right here. Lots of information on your nodes. And then uh, monitor. Um, I've actually got a monitor. I put a monitor on a modem here earlier, and we're going to see what this is. I put a monitor on this particular modem that I'm going to pull up. That's, again, a troubleshooting tool that might be helpful maybe for some people that are trying to troubleshoot right now, whether they're home or in the office. So I'll go back to that. So um, go back to the CMTS screen here and see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. I think that's probably it um, on here. Again, we'll go into more detail on this screen on a broadcast in the future. But from here, um, you know, you could pull up individual modems. Like if I want to look at who's online, um, I can click that and I can pull up individual modems. Or you can query if you've got, let's say, say you've got a call center agent in their home right now. You know, how do they get visibility into the network and to devices? Well, they can do it right here through this. This is cloud-based, so um, they can search right here. Uh, they can do an advanced search and pull up by all kinds of different information. And I'm just going to pull up some devices that I had searched for earlier because they're pretty good examples that I wanted to show. So here's a modem diagnostic screen. This is also in our trial. Uh, instance of this, but this is a real device that's online right now, and you can see you've got some great information on here for maybe a call center rep or anybody else that even a field service guy that's trying to figure out what's going on with a subscriber. You've got some great information here. You've got the modem status. You can immediately see that it's online and you know how 
when it's been offline, flaps, those kinds of things. You've got, um, you can ping the device right here. You can ping interfaces like this particular one is a, let's see, embedded interface. So you can ping that, that's a router. Um, you've got your signal quality here. So I can look at the upstream and the downstream channels right here on all of these. And I can see I've got some issues. And another thing that can be helpful, again, what we're trying to do is try to make it as efficient as possible for your call center agent or whoever else is looking at this information. So we put on the same screen the modem port status. So you could look, if you're looking at this customer, you could then look at this panel and have uh, an indication maybe of if other people are suffering from the same issue. So I've got my upstream channel right here. I can look at this one uh, and get these, deal, these uh, stats right here, this data, or I can click to that particular channel and again I get data for that. So if I had a problem I would see, for example, if there were a lot of offline modems on this particular channel then it would show up as red and you could see the percentage would go up for offline modems up to above the threshold for yellow or red and it would appear there. So we see no real issues here so that's that's helpful. Of course you've got the map on this side. This particular um, customer, it's not really, this is not the real customer. We've got several modems associated with this fake customer. So that's why you see three devices here. Um, if the customer did have more than one device in their home, you could click from one device to the next and pull those up. Uh, or in the case, like this one here is showing offline, or in the case of uh, maybe if you had the set-top view product and this was a, there was a set-top box in this house, that would appear here as well. So you could click from one device to the next. Um, I was going to show you also a drill in on this particular, actually I want to go to this one. So you can drill in on this signal quality here and look at some things, again from a troubleshooting perspective, and I'm looking at uh, now over time, in this case I'm looking at the last 24 hours. I could stream this live as well, or go 7, 30, or 90 days. And I'm looking at the uh, upstream information as far as power and RF levels, and then I've got my downstream down here. And what I put, I did put a monitor on this uh, uh, an hour or so ago, and I let it run for about an hour. So you can see that the, uh, if you have a c customer that you want to keep an eye on, like they're, um, you're seeing some issues, uh, and maybe the regular, I think it's 10 minute polling, doesn't quite show you the granularity you, need, granularity you need. You can put on a monitor, and then uh, you can see here where the, the lines get thicker. That's why I've got the monitor on, and you can drag a little bit here and open that up some. And now we're looking at that and you can see the difference, right? So you can see here with the, the usual polling that we've got, looks like every 15 minutes, yeah, that's right, every 15 minutes polling and then it goes down to every, is that every minute maybe? Uh, I think so. So you can see the granularity and that can help a lot because you can see that this really flattens out when you're not looking at all of those data points when you're polling. Uh, I noticed here another good example is on correctable code word errors. You can um, see the difference right there as well. As you get more granular, you can see the ups and downs a little bit easier. So that's helpful. Uh, there was something else I was going to show. Was it on bandwidth? Um, oh yeah, I was going to drill on in this. So again, speaking of, you know again speaking of bandwidth, it's very important right now because we've got um, lots of customers at home. So you can in this particular panel, you've got your upload and your download, uh, and I can go ahead and click the, uh, the drill in right there, and I can see that over time. Again, right now I'm looking at uh, 24 hours. Uh, I can look at longer, or I can stream it in live. So this is the transfer rate, and then here I've got my data usage by hour, so I can see that. And if I wanted to see the, you know, obviously I've got more downstream than upstream, but if I wanted to see the upstream more closely, I can uncheck that, and that, that adjusts my uh, chart right here so that I can actually see the, the difference in the hours there as well. And again, you can, you can click live. I'll let that run for a minute. You'll see what that does. So Rick Yanger, great product. Glad. Glad to hear that. Uh, so you're having your techs work outside on red modems now when they don't need to go inside the home. That's great. So. Um, what Rick's doing there is almost again like almost like a proactive network maintenance tool. Although this this is not as proactive as the tool I'm going to show next week. Um, but you know an example of that. Let me close this. 
go back to my CMTS screen, is you can, you know, you can pick your, your worst channels here. This is my worst channel as far as red modems go. And uh, I can click that right there. That's not what I want to click. That's showing me that I wanted to actually click the number. So I can click this 8 right here. And then I get a list of the subscribers. And again, normally you would see names here on all of these if you've got the, the name of the database. But you get a list of your subscribers. And here's, here's our one guy right here. Um, that we're looking at, and you can then attack these uh, kind of proactively as Rick is doing. So they go, okay, well let's see, let's see what we can fix. You know, we can't have people go in the house. So let's see what we can do uh, while the people can't go in the house. We'll go ahead and get ahead of this stuff. And this is one way that you can do that is by looking at your worst issues. Um, the reason this isn't um, like a actual Doxis PNM tool is because a Doxis PNM tool will look at micro reflections uh, and group delay that tend to be hidden when you have pre-equalization turned on in, on your CMTS. So pre-EQ will compensate for those micro-reflections and it can hide that from a corrective maintenance application. But uh, a DOCSIS PNM tool will take that pre-EQ data and even though it's hiding it from something like this, it will then tell you which devices are compensating for micro-reflections, for example. It'll point all of that out. We'll be covering that next week. So, but Rick, that's a great idea. I'm glad you guys are doing that. Uh, let's see, let me go back here. So I was on my bandwidth uh, for this particular customer and I was streaming it in live. So if, if you had a customer on the phone and, you know, we wanted to see what they were doing, you know, they were telling you they're having some connectivity issues or that the service wasn't very good, you could go in here and see exactly what they're doing as far as bandwidth. Not, you can't see what they're doing, you don't know what they're doing, but you can see the amount of bandwidth that they're transferring at that time. So that could be helpful as far as troubleshooting. I'll go back to my device here. Um, we've got some tabs up here, and depending on what the device supports, in this particular case, this device supports Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is quite often uh, an issue for customers. A lot of times when they're calling you about uh, the connection speed, it's really the Wi-Fi network, uh, which I hope you guys are seeing the stream well, <laughs> because right before I got on, I'm on Wi-Fi, um, and it was telling me that my stream was not the best. So I'm, I think I may be buying, because that's kind of scary, I think I may be buying a Ethernet, a big long Ethernet cord and running it from upstairs down these steps to my laptop next time to make sure that I get a good stream. I'll have to see. Um, but again, Wi-Fi can be an issue. A lot of times customers complain about the connection and it's really their Wi-Fi. So if you can see these tabs are not clickable because this is not a power supply, There's not, if this doesn't support spectrum capture, this is not a DOCSIS 3.1 modem, and this particular device does not have an EMTA, so it's not voice. But I can click on the Wi-Fi tab here, and it'll take a... It's collecting a lot of data right now, and how long it takes to load is dependent upon the device. All we can do is go out uh, with whatever MIBs are supplied with this device, whatever um, information or data this device can provide on Wi-Fi, and then we will go out and grab it. And I think this particular device takes a really long time, so I may come back to this in a minute. I think I was, that wasn't that bad. Um, but now I'm looking at some data specific to this customer on Wi-Fi. Again, I can ping the device. Um, I can see here the particular radio's information. I've got radio there and there. And I've got, let's see, I've got 2.4 gigahertz on this case, on this case, of this one. And there's a, here's a 5 gigahertz, so this... This one's got dual bands, so I've got that information. Um, so again, when you're, if you've got a call center agent that's trying to help a customer, um, and especially in this situation now where you want to avoid sending people, uh, Benton Cable says streaming fine, thank you. Uh, if you want to avoid um, maybe sending a truck out somewhere, because again, you can't enter the home uh, at this time maybe, or you're really trying to limit that, then there's some things you can do here. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, this maybe an optional tab. So if you don't get this, if you click on here, if, it, if the Wi-Fi is lit up and yet it doesn't open, it might tell you that you need to, that it's a separately licensed thing. So contact your business account manager uh, or just send an email to info at zcorm.com if you have questions about that. Um, right here I've got a menu that I can click on. So again, if I've got a uh, call center agent and they want to help this customer, and we don't want to roll a truck out there to try to figure out what's going on. There's things that we can do. We can change the channel on the device. Um, we can 
change the radio state, which would be enabling it or disabling it. Um, if they wanted to disable one of the radios and just use one of them, you can do that. You can change the Wi-Fi transmit power. That would be that might be if you were had a customer in an apartment building, for example, and you didn't want you wanted to lower the the Wi-Fi transmit power so less of it was leaking through the walls. Um, you could do that. That's really more helpful for the person on the other side of the, the wall, but that's something you can do. And then you can scan for Wi-Fi radios, nearby radios, and some of these things, you can see it's scanning now. Sometimes it'll come up that it doesn't support this. Again, it depends on what the device itself supports. In this case, this one supports a Wi-Fi scan, and we can see the RSSI number. So sometimes uh, Wi-Fi, poor Wi-Fi is related interference uh, from another device on a channel. So we can see right here, information about this particular device and we can see what channel uh, other folks are on so we could maybe make an educated, uh, educated decision on what channel to change this customer to if we wanted to do that. Um, up here again a customer might say hey can, how do I change the SSID of my uh, device? Well you could try to walk them through that or you can just change it for them or how do I change the password? I need to change my password or maybe they can't remember it so Rather than having to go out and touch that device, you can go right in here and change that password for them and change the SSID state. And then uh, this is a multimedia thing uh, that you can change if you need to do that. So you've got some things that you can do there. And then right here on the right, you've got all of your um, clients that are connected. And, you know, it's going to vary depending on where somebody is in the home. And sometimes it's their iPhone and they're walking around and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But you can look, if you're troubleshooting with a customer online, you can look and see which device they're on and then try to figure out what's going on. Because a lot of times it's about placement. Um, you know, where is the laptop that they're using versus the, the wireless router, right? So um, I can go ahead and click here and I'll let this load. Pete or Olivia? Hello, Pete. That's true. Yeah, Pete is online. Pete Olivia is our uh, VP of Systems and Soft Systems Engineering and Software Development. So uh, he can go ahead and answer any questions uh, that you guys have. Just type them in the chat, and Pete will answer them via chat. So that'd be great. Thanks, Pete. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, Benton Cable. If you want to check in on that, anything that you need, um, go ahead and just contact your business account manager, or again, email info at zico at zcorum.com and I will get it over to them if you've got questions about that. So um, let's see, I am looking at my Wi-Fi client device. So now I'm looking at this particular client and I can see over time what's been going on with this client. And again, the live I think is very helpful here. So if you're online with the customer and they've got, uh, they're saying I'm, I'm getting a terrible connection, you can go ahead and pull up whichever device they're on and if you, um, if you hover over the MAC address, it will tell you who the, the vendor is generally because we can tell from the MAC address. So here, this is Amazon Technologies. So uh, we don't know who that is. I'm going to ignore that phone call. And uh, we don't, it could be a um, Fire, Amazon, what is it, the Fire Stick or whatever it is. could be that. could be a Kindle. We don't know exactly. But we do know it's an Amazon. So that will help you identify what they're using. Uh, and as, let's see, it should be this one, this particular device may not even be online right now because I'm not seeing anything stream in. So normally you'd see if they were online and they may not be, you'd start to see these data points come in here. And yeah, I'm a, they're not online because I can see the graph moving. So uh, let's see, I'll go back here. I'll pick one more that may be online so we can see that. Ah, maybe I won't because this does take a little bit of time. I'll come back to that. Um, I also wanted to show you voice. Uh, this particular device has a voice account with it. You can see the packet cable embedded interface here. You can ping that. Um, and when I click on the voice tab, I'm going to get diagnostics that will help me troubleshoot this voice account. So anything that we could do, again, to avoid rolling a truck is good anytime, but especially now if you can't even go in the house or if that's your policy that you, you shouldn't be going in the house now. So when you pull this up, you can see some very helpful information here. Again, I can ping this device here. I can see uh, the status of my lines. So sometimes somebody's just got the phone off the hook. <laughs> so immediately I can tell, okay, these are both on hook. So I'm okay there. Um, 
you've got some tests you can run. I can run a loop diagnostics test. I'm not going to click that because this is a real device, even though this is not a real address, or it's a real address, not, not where they are. Because I believe that takes, that will disconnect anything at that point. I can reset the modem. I'm not going to do that. But the loop diagnostics will check the inside wire, and you can do that. You've got your battery state here, so you can see if there's any issues with the battery. Uh, this, again, is de going to depend on the device. Some will report this information and some won't. So it's going to depend on whatever we can get from the device that will show up. And yeah, uh, Pete's telling me about the MOS scores. I'm going to go ahead and drill in on that. So you've got your signal quality here. This is nice to know uh, what the modem's doing right now as far as signal quality. Again, you can drill in on that. And I can drill in on the MOS score. So this is showing me the most frequent call, not most frequent, the most recent calls here. And I can see I do have a couple of calls that uh, had some issues right there. And I can drill in and get more information um, when I do that. And now I get more calls. And actually, I'm looking at, here it is. So I've got my date range here. So I'm actually looking at from January through, through March. We're storing that much data. And I can scroll down. And as I scroll down, I'll get to the most recent calls that I was looking at right here. So uh, you get this information. I can go ahead and click this little arrow to get some details. And I get more, I guess this is MOS score data, more MOS score data. Pete can probably let us know what I'm looking at right here, although there is a delay. So when I'm seeing something, it's probably going to take 15 or 20 seconds for Pete to even see that. So, so Rick Inger says, we urge customers to move next to the modem and try sp speed test, and then can inform them to look into existing extending their wireless coverage. Yeah. A lot of times this will tell you, you know, like if you're on the phone with somebody and they're saying, well, this is where I usually use my laptop, then you can say, well, we have the option of maybe moving the router to a more centralized location, or you can get extenders and, and do some things there. Uh, so let's see. I don't see an answer for you yet. So I think this is all, this is all MOS kind of, well, there's different kinds of data here. So you've got, let's see, we've got our Mac, modem Mac, associated number, call start, call durations. This tells you the call. Here's your MOS CQ and your MOS LQ. And then again, we've got some additional details right here. And system delay, loss rate, discard rate, upstream transmit power. You know, these are your transmit power. So this is good to know, your SNR. It's good to know during the call um, if there was an issue, why there was an issue. So you've got your signal noise ratio. You've got your upstream and downstream power. You've got your battery state. You can see what the battery state was at the time of the call. So it's good to know those things as well. We have we save issues we saw over time. OK, thanks, Pete. All right, so that's voice. Again, very, I think a very helpful thing to do troubleshooting at any time. But again, especially to try to maybe minimize truck rolls or to be more efficient in helping customers at this time when we have, uh, when we have staff working at home. And then I also wanted to show something. I don't have it. I didn't have this set up on our uh, demo database, so I'm going to show this on another instance of this. But um, we do have a Spectrum tab in here. If a device supports Spectrum, that will be lit up. I'm not going to click on the device because there's an actual customer address and name and all of that stuff on that tab, so I'm not going to click on that. But uh, in this case, I've got Spectrum, and I just go ahead and click this play button. And this is using the full spectrum capture. Some people call it full band capture um, uh, capabilities in the device to then show you the downstream spectrum as it's passing through this device. Uh, this is also a um, optional feature. So if you came to this tab and it was lit up and you clicked on it, it should tell you that this that feature is licensed and you need to contact somebody about that. So. But what I'm able to see here, again, is this is live spectrum coming in from this modem. So it's really nice to have this available. Pete and I talked about our remote spectrum product um, a few weeks ago before the zombie apocalypse <laughs> made us all go home. Um, so we were showing our remote spectrum product, which is similar to this. Uh, it looks very similar uh, via Tech Tuesday broadcast. And we were planning on showing this uh, the following week and then wound up being home and I, I did some other things. But Pete and I will go over this in more detail in a future broadcast. But you can see right here uh, that this is beneficial if you're trying to look at a customer's downstream signal. And you can, rather than have to roll a truck and go to the customer's house, somewhere near the house or at the house, you can pull it right from the modem right here. And you've got 
typical kind of settings that you would have on a uh, meter. Anybody that's familiar with one, uh, so you can go ahead and do, I don't want to change, let's go ahead and change that to 18. It should, yeah, I was gonna say. Now I'm looking at a wider swath of the spectrum so you can start to see it rolling off here. So this is a really nice feature to have. Again, somebody not, uh, you, don't, you don't have somebody in the field or maybe you want to avoid somebody going out in the field. You can look at some things here and get a good indication of what's going on. So uh, another helpful thing right there. So uh, I think, let me go back to data or device here. I think that's just a few things that I wanted to show that would be very helpful for you. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot in here in Truven that's going to be helpful regardless of whether somebody's at home or, or they're not. But um, there's some things specifically in here that could be helpful if you've got your work staff remote, especially call center agents, um, if they don't really have a way to look at what's going on, maybe all of those tools are in the office, um, then this is something that can be very helpful. If, if you don't have a product like True Vision, especially for those that have True Vision, they're aware of it, and they may have their you guys may have your staff already set up on this. Maybe some of these other features are something you were not aware of or hadn't thought of. So, um, so again, next week I'm going to be talking about proactive network maintenance, and I see some ways that that can also be useful at this time. It's kind of like what Rick Inger was saying, where um, you know, there's some things that you can do right now while you have people that can't necessarily go in the home or that you're trying to, trying to reduce the amount of times that people actually have to go in the home. You can keep them really busy with proactive network maintenance. I mean, it's going to find things that you didn't even know about. Uh, and, and the beauty of that is, you know, it's going to improve the plant performance, just like what Rick's doing, you know, finding some of those red modems and tackling those one at a time, those worst modems. Uh, using Docs's PNM will improve the plant performance. That's going to make people happier, and you, it's going to be while well, you've got all this demand on your cable plant, that's going to help. And then also, it's going to reduce future outages as well because you're going to be fixing things that, even though now it seems fine to the subscriber uh, because pre EQ is compensating for it, over time it's going to get worse, and eventually it gets to a point where pre-EQ can't compensate anymore. So if you can fix that now, you won't have to be doing those things later. That can help, uh, especially as you know summer comes along, temperatures change, and you know, things change in your plant. So, Well, thanks for joining me, and thanks, for, thanks Rick, for chiming in there, and, and Pete, and I hope others that are watching that this was helpful for you. If it was, um, go ahead and uh, hope you liked the video there on, on YouTube, and click subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, click the bell and you'll be notified anytime that we um, are live. Let's pull up the chat here. Basically the same thing uh, you're seeing on the side there. But um, Next week, again, I'll be talking about proactive network maintenance. I hope you join me. That'll be at 3 o'clock on Tuesday for Tech Tuesday, proactive network maintenance. And I will see you then and I will be here again because we're going to be, we're trying to follow the guidelines. Uh, so we're all working remotely. And I will be here again, same time and the same place, for Tech Tuesday. See you later. Bye-bye.